Namaskar. It's wonderful to be with all of you and to be with those of you joining online. These are wonderful thoughts about cooperation. And as we entered the temple here, it was so sweet to see everyone had some little seva to do, some people putting flowers on the altar, some setting up the cameras and setting up the chairs. And this has been my life of Ananda. It's just serving together, uh, helping one another. You can ask, now why do we even have places like this? Um, well, when we meditate together, we feel much more strong in our meditation. I've heard that from many people. So we come together to strengthen our meditation. When we chant, we seem like we can just break through any stagnant energy as we chant the chants and we can uplift ourselves together. It's much diff more different when you're at home by yourself and when you come to the center. Also when you come places like this, uh, there's so many opportunities to give and to get in tune through service. And also we help each other um, not to sink down into delusions. I mean, the Guru Bhai is one who's there. It's a brother or sister in God and in the Gurus. And it's a, it's a very blessed gift to have a Guru Bhai because they will always look to your highest need and um, try to uplift you and upliftment and inspire, inspiring you and all. I remember um, a time that I was, we were going out buying things for the ashram up in Gargan and, and you know, there was various things needed and, and I was just getting, oh, we need two of these and three of those and, and five of these and let's get more of that. And, <laughs> and somebody looked at me and said, don't buy anything else. <laughs> and it was just what was needed, another guru buy. And so as you tend to kind of veer off in one direction or another and not, you're not in attunement as much, that the Guru Bhai helps you. And so community is about, yes, meditation together, chanting together, serving together, being uplifted together, inspired together. And these are bonds we have from other lifetimes, as Jayaji was saying. Um, when Swamiji came to Master, he, uh, within, a very short time. Master had him giving Kriya. Master had him teaching on his behalf. Master had him uh, in charge of the monks. He had him editing various things. And he, uh, Swamiji said, Master didn't care how new I was, how inexperienced I was, how new to the teachings I was, how young I was. He was 22 years old. He said, Master, what he cared about was the bond that we had from other lifetimes. And that bond, we have it with the gurus, that bond of friendship and wanting to uplift each other, we have it with each other. That's something that's very sacred. And uh, I remember um, that that vibration that we have is very magnetic and it's very uplifting. And we magnetize the people who are our own to come to us, or we come to them. And um, Master said that he prayed for somebody strong to come. And Norman came, it's a very big, strong disciple of his. And I remember hearing on one of Swamiji's talks that uh, he walked into a talk and he, he just had this feeling about somebody who might come and it was uh, Seva, some of you know her. And he said he walked in and he saw her and he said yes, it was so right for her to be there. And as she came in, when she came in the room she saw Swamiji when they met and she said it was so right that he was there. It was just, uh, these things were magnetically drawn into the spiritual family. and. Um, and that is to help each other to, to find God. Yanamata came, her husband brought her to Yoganandaji, and he said, he left her there. And he said, she wants to be here. She remembers this vibration. And so Yanamata came, and various disciples at different times, but we have to remember we're magnetically drawn. 
the masters are drawing the spiritual family back together again and and if we have the benefit of having a community as well that's wonderful but I know some of you were on retreat in Bangalore and that's community many of you are going um, up to Babaji's cave with Jyotish and Devi they're doing two different programs and that's community of course coming to satsang and doing various things together but the community is really in your heart it's it's Guruji's family coming together to help and uplift each other and you know these places or and also I was wanting to say also online that's a community um, someone here Gayatri yeah. was saying when I walked in she said yes I haven't met you in person but I know you because I've seen you online and uh, so e online and Facebook and all these various ways that we connect on WhatsApp and all of that is reminding us of the vibration that we all remember when I I first went to Ananda uh, in the late 70s before I went there I was somewhere else but and I had master's books and I was studying but I always felt where's my family my spiritual family and I was always very um, I loved master's books but I would look around and I, I didn't know anybody who was as enthusiastic as I was and I kept feeling inside there are people like me somewhere and um, in a short time master showed me those people at, through Ananda and I went there and um, I met Swamiji and he said this is your home you should think about living here and you know I didn't didn't take that very seriously but then I met the people and I felt this I this feels familiar I did the chants the chanting and I said I love these chants I did the yoga postures I read the books I I learned the techniques and it all very much felt familiar that vibration felt familiar when I look in the at the altar and all of these things told me this is your spiritual family this is your community and sometimes it you know it sometimes they're kind of odd characters that <laughs> come through and you wonder is this really my community <laughs> I, you know the story of Swamiji told of one man who came who was a monk with him and he said I don't know why I hate you so much Don but I do <laughs> you know but that was his brother disciple and um, there was a disciple um, his name was the bronze buckaroo uh, what was his name again this Herb Jeffries and master had all kinds of people coming he had many movie stars and singers and opera singers and and um, Herb Jeffries was from what I understand he was quite something and so he he came in the master and he you know he had this he spoke in slang so he was always in man and this and not digging uh, can you dig this and that was the word then dig and master said what are you digging for <laughs> digging and, but that was one of his spiritual children and and there was uh, James Collier who master said was too hot to swallow was and too sticky to spit out I mean he was always in trouble <laughs> somehow but as we're here we realize that no matter what there's this I remember a woman at Ananda village who she came she and then she left in a, a huff sort of and and uh, I'll never forget Swamiji said about her she'll never find God except through this channel not amazing I mean he meant the channel of master through him through Ananda through these teachings through what was happening there and you know we think we can go here and there but we have it's ordained by God where we go our spiritual brothers and sisters and you know we've all been doing this in many lifetimes before and so when we look at how do we build community in the way that you know we're doing now I know you all are <clears throat> talking about getting a bigger location and all that but even before that 
I would keep in mind, start now in what you're doing now. Um, come as much as you can to the satsangs and the meditations and the Kriya retreats and whatever it is that's happening here. Just come and be in this vibration because there's a certain energy that's here that you don't find it out there. And as you come here and you chanting and meditating and all together, you find um, great blessings that help you in, in everything that you do. And also, I know everybody here is serving, but find some way that other people may be online that you can help because you feel a part of things. When we were in Gargan, when we got our center there, every person came and helped. Every person either, I don't know, contributed or bought a fan or got a harmonium or bought a rug or put the pictures of the masters up or some, everyone did something and everyone felt a part. And I was telling someone recently, I feel closest to the people I meditate with and serve with. And that's probably how you feel as well. And so as you can find ways to serve, you get more in tune, you get more um, in tune with each other as well. And it becomes so much fun, more fun and uplifting. I remember a man who came to Ananda village uh, and he, I may have told you this story, but it's so funny. He came just to bring his wife to the meditation, to the expanding light. And he would always say when he came, oh, I, I, I'm not coming for myself, I'm just coming for my wife. And she's into this, I'm not. But he was an electrician, I think it was. So he would go work on the buildings and his wife was in the classes and taking discipleship and then Kriya and whatever. And, and every time he would see me, he would say, no, no, I'm not here for myself. And I, and I said, I'm not gonna push you. <laughs> and so that went on for quite some time. And then maybe at least two years, but he kept bringing his wife and he'd work on the buildings. And, and then one day he came and, uh, and I just happened to see him there. And he says, oh, Diana, I'm taking discipleship today. And I said, oh my gosh, really? I thought you came for your wife. <laughs> he said, no, I'm a disciple now. And I thought, look what happened to that man because he just served. He wasn't even setting up an altar. He was working on the wiring. But because he just kept coming, he was in the vibration, he brought his wife, <laughs> that was good karma, and he was there. He changed, he took discipleship, he took Kriya. Now he's living in an Ananda community and his wife with him as well, but isn't it beautiful? I mean, beautiful story. So as we also serve, we have satsang, I think singing in the choir is such a wonderful thing. I mean, the choir here is beautiful. The most beautiful part, of course, is the music, but the faces, they change. Your face changes, your eyes change, your vibration changes. And it's fun because choir is community. You have to stay on your note. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> you know, to make it all work out. And, uh, but it's a joint effort. Ananda's about joint efforts. That's what I'm realizing more and more. It's not a singular thing. I'm going to find my cave and meditate and change myself and never come back, you know. <laughs> and everything is like, we have times we come together for satsang, and they're joyous times, and, and we have meetings, you know, we have, uh, I'm sure you have them here too in Gargan, we're planning this, planning that. I'm not sitting in there by myself with a computer. There's at least three or four or five people, and we're all, you know, we've got the whiteboard up, and we've got all the ideas coming, and, you know, and we're working things out, and we're laughing so much. It's so much fun, and that's community. We're all trying to come up with the ideas together. And then we have kirtan. We're chanting, or you know, one, two, three, four people are playing different chants, and that's community. We're all singing together. We're all sitting to meditate together. Think if you had to do all those things by yourself. 
we come to classes together and uh, we have uh, various classes, but one we had was the Bhagavad Gita study group and Patanjali study group. And many times I thought to myself, I would have never gone as deep in my understanding of these teachings if I hadn't been with the group. How, would I, how was I going to understand that? But one person says this, the other person, well, I think it means this, and the other person, you know, it's like Divine Mother's coming through all the different people in a class. And also, if it's just even one person there, the other people are joining in with their energy and vibration. So even in a class, it's a group effort. The center, setting up the place is a group effort. Save is a group effort. Singing in the choir is a group effort. Chanting is a group effort. Everything we're doing, we're doing it together as a family and as a community. And I remember once in Italy, there were uh, four of us Swamiji took there to help to start the work there. And he said, all four of you together will have a strong magnetism to set this, found this work in Italy. He said, if any of you tries to go on your own, you'll have nothing. He was very clear. <laughs> you, you'll have nothing. You'll be able to do nothing. But he said, if you stick with each other, it's a, I think that's the same for every center, every group, a meditation group. If you stick together, as you know, the saying of Jesus where uh, two or more are gathered, there I am. But if you stick together and in your meditation, and here's an interesting thing. If you meditate together, you, you don't need to talk as much. Have you noticed that? I mean, if, you, if the group meditates together, you arrive at decisions, ideas, inspirations very quickly. And the people who haven't been meditating with their group, they go, oh, I got this other idea. Have you noticed that? It's very interesting. But if, as you meditate together, you're on the same wavelength, and then everybody's you know, at the same energy as you serve together. Everybody's moving forward together. And so what we want to say is don't wait for a building to try to be a community or a piece of land. It's just not. It never will be. Even you have the best place you could ever find. It's the people and the vibration and the intention of the people coming together, serving, meditating together. And when, as I've been coming here, we've been coming to Chennai over know, the past couple of years or so, every time you see more and more of the family feelings growing, growing. And you know, Dharma Rajan said tonight, he said, you know, I'm not gonna introduce you. I said, don't introduce us, we know everybody. <laughs> no, why would you introduce us? This is our family too. You know, an introduction is like, now you don't know them. <laughs> These are the people right here. <laughs> we both said, we know everybody. This is our family. And so as we are all sharing and serving and being together and meditating and having retreats and all these various things, we're all coming together like this. And that's a magnet that will draw many, many other uh, Master's children that are out there looking. Remember when you first came, just think about it, they're out there looking for the light. And, and I'll share finally one last story of, I, I had been at Ananda for some, uh, some months at least, and, and then at a certain point, I mean, I had felt the energy, the vibration. I, I met so many people. I met Jaya at that time, Jyotishan Devi, and you know, I was brand new, but I felt a lot, but I wasn't quite sure yet. You probably had that feeling. And so um, one day I just decided, well, I think this isn't for me. And uh, you know, I just didn't want to energize every day and meditate, and you have to be positive, energetic, enthusiastic. And I said, that's enough for me. <laughs> so I remember I got in my car, and I didn't tell anybody. And I just drove off the property, Ananda Village. And I, I drove all the way back home. And uh, 
I try to leave my family. Interesting. And I thought, well, I think I'll just go back to what I was doing and where I was and the people I was with. And what's wrong with that? That's okay. And I went there and I was away for three long years. And whatever could go wrong went wrong because I was supposed to be with this family. And I, and I, I tried, you know, I, I was hanging by a thread, but I tried to keep meditating, but I remember I got, when I got home, home, I had this picture of Master, like big, you know, bigger than this one, and, and I used to meditate in front of that picture, and I don't know how it happened, but it fell off the wall, and the glass broke across his face, and I went, oh no. I knew that was a bad sign. And then I have my mala, my Kriya mala, and it, it broke and all the beads fell on the floor and I said, oh, that's not a good sign either. <laughs> and things just kept getting worse and worse and worse. It was like just sort of sliding downhill because it was clear, Swamiji had told me, this is your home. You should think about living here. And, and I, it was a part of me that wanted to, a part of me didn't. Anyway, I said that to say you can't really leave your own if master is your guru, these masters are guiding you. Finally, after three long years, it was as if I could hear master saying, just go back to Ananda. That's your home there. That's your family. You don't even have to live there. Just go. Spend some time, a weekend or whatever. And I came back to Ananda. And the funny thing was, and that was, I mean, it was, it took everything I had to come back. Because I was sure that that was not for me, even though part of me knew it was. So when I came back, I thought, nobody will remember me. <laughs> and I came back, and everybody, you're the girl who was here three years back. Why did you go? You're the person who was there. And I just felt so terrible. <laughs> but I, I ended up, after that, I moved back immediately. They had an Ananda house, I think it was Palo Alto then, and I, I dropped everything and I went back home to, a, to Ananda house. And I had this, this tiny room with a friend. I didn't know the girl, but she was very nice. And, and I was, I, the door was like if, if my head was touching that door and I was lying down. So I had a futon on the floor. My head would be touching the door and anybody going in and out, in and out. It was just <laughs> knocking my head. <laughs> but I was never so happy <laughs> because I was back home and that was my family. Even if I didn't know those people in the house. And then I met other people. Then I moved to San Francisco. I met those people and I lived there for a while. Then I moved to Italy and there was another whole family. But still an Ananda family. Then, you know, when I moved to India, I didn't know one Indian. But when I got here, I looked around and I knew people. It was so dear. It was Master was saying, these are your brothers and sisters. This is your family. And so, uh, you know, when we speak of community, I think people have such a big, huge thought about it. Well, we've got to have this, we've got to have that. We already have it. We have it. What we need to do now is live it. Live it with joy, with love. Let Master do the rest. If we need something more, He's going to provide if we, you know, put our energy into it. But let's live community now and uh, help each other along the path to find God. God bless you. We'll meditate just a moment, then we'll have the arati.